Hello there, this is Dermot O'Brien here from Spark Systems. Welcome to this introduction to the ProCloud Server's integration features. In any work environment, there can be a number of applications involved in the development process. This can range from simple requirement management tools through to the likes of CAD applications. What the ProCloud Server integration provides is a linking between items from the external systems to Enterprise Architect's elements. This brings the content into a single repository and allows the element to be related and updated with external information on the fly. In this webinar, we'll cover the following topics. Using the integration data window for linking the external items to internal elements. How to view the notes, properties and discussions, both internal and external. How to create elements in Enterprise Architect from the external items, as well as creating items in the external application from Enterprise Architect elements. We will then look at push and pull editing. Then we will look at how to configure the ProCloud server to connect to the external application. And finally, we will look at setting your own type mapping between the external item types and Enterprise Architect's element types. This includes mapping fields in each of these. Let's firstly look at the data integration window. We will start by looking at the data in the external application. In this case, it is JIRA. We have a number of JIRA items in a current filter called All Issues. On the Enterprise Architect side, we start with the Specialized ribbon. Then select the Systems Integration option. In this External Data view, we can select one of the external applications that have been configured. In this case, it is JIRA. What this view shows is a listing of the items in a JIRA instance. For this selected item, it has an internal element replicating that item in Enterprise Architect. We look again at the correspondence with the item in JIRA. Let's have a look at the description. Now let's select the internal element. Here we see two tabs in the notes view, local and external. The local tab shows the imported notes of the Enterprise Architect element. The external tab shows the JIRA item's description. Let's have a look at the element properties. These are shown in the properties view. This has two tabs to access both the details on the internal element as well as details on the external item. Now we will cover importing an item as an element into Enterprise Architect. Let's start with selecting an item in Jira that we want to import as an element into EA. We can see this item logged in the external data view. To create an element from this item, you use the context menu. We can now see the element with its details synced with the external item. Let's now do a bulk input by selecting a group and again using the context option. We can now see the full list of imported items. With the integration, you can take an element in Enterprise Architect and add this to the external provider. To do this, select an element in the browser. From the hamburger, select the Create Linked Item option. Now you can see it's created an item in Jira which is linked to the element. We can also see the element on the JIRA side. A quick note though, to import an element it must be of a type that you have configured to be type mapped. Also note its placement in the case of JIRA is to a project, not specifically to a filter. We will now run over doing updates and syncing these. Let's add some text to the notes of the internal element. Then we can sync that back to the source item in JIRA using the context option. We can now see this has been pushed back to JIRA. Let's now do an update on the JIRA side and save it. Then we can see this is updated in the JIRA item in Enterprise Architect. When we want to do an update to the related Enterprise Architect element, we can just pull this change back. Let's have a look at exchanging discussions. In JIRA, we have a messaging system for an item. In Enterprise Architect, we have an equivalent element chat system. With the integration, where there is a message sent for an item, this is reflected in the Collaborate chat window. Similarly, a chat in EA is received in the external application. With the synced elements, we can use these in a variety of ways. We can use them as standard elements in diagrams, or we can simply view them in the likes of the Specification Manager. 
Let's look at linking these into the model and setting up any connectivity to internal elements. In this case, we're setting a trace on an internal EA issue with an item logged in JIRA. On the local element, we can see the local notes and the external JIRA notes using the tabs, as well as viewing the collaboration chat. Let's now take a look at a simple setup of an integration to JIRA using the ProCloud server. First, we will open the ProCloud server's configuration application. We then select the integration tab. Now let's add a new integration to JIRA. First we'll give it a name, then set the type of provider, in this case JIRA. Then we'll set the JIRA path, its port and the HTTPS protocol that we want to use. Now let's set the change options. If you have a proxy server, we set the path and password for this. Ensure you set a username and password to access the service. And finally, set a unique prefix. Now back on the integration page, you can set which repositories you want to provide access to this integration. Before testing this, ensure the service is restarted to cover the new settings. Now let's start Enterprise Architect. Open the system integration. Select JIRA, then select the setup that we just created called JIRA Developer. And then we open up a filter that we set up in the JIRA app. Let's now look at configuring the type mapping between the applications. Each supported application has a default configuration that defines the associations between the external item types and their corresponding Enterprise Architect element types. For example, a JIRA issue of type bug relates to an element type called a defect. This configuration includes setting specific field mappings between the JIRA bug fields and the EA's defect fields. So let's look at a new user-defined item type in JIRA. We have named it My Issue Type. Now looking at the type mapping in Enterprise Architect, let's load that new item type. Then we can set it to have a corresponding type in Enterprise Architect, a maintenance defect type. We can now set the relationship of a field in JIRA to a field or tag value in Enterprise Architect using the field mapping dialog. In this case, we will set this field to be related to a tag value field on the Enterprise Architect side. We can now see this defined as a new field mapping between the JIRA field and the tag value in Enterprise Architect. In conclusion to this webinar, let's have a look at what we have covered. What we have shown is how to view the properties and descriptions of items in the external provider, create elements in Enterprise Architect from items in the external provider, create items in the external provider from elements in the Enterprise Architect, synchronize data using push and pull, and exchanging discussions. Further, we cover the integration setup process for an external provider and the option to set your own type mapping. For more information on modelling using Enterprise Architect, see the resources page on our website, sparksystems.com forward slash resources.